So with Fidel Castro gone, will Cubans finally fully embrace capitalism? Donald Trump tweeting, if Cuba is unwilling to make a better deal for the Cuban people, the Cuban American people, and the U.S. as a whole, I will terminate the deal. Here to discuss former Trump senior advisor A.J. Delgado and after the bell co-host David Asman. A.J. Delgado, uh, Raul Castro uh, over the last decade or so had implemented some, some things that people thought were a hint that when his brother passed away maybe he would uh, bring in more wholesale changes because obviously changes in Russia and, co and China over the last decade or so underscore the fact that communism don't work as if we needed a reminder. Right. You would think there were some we, people in Cuba were allowed to, for instance, a resume going to church again, something that wasn't really allowed uh, prior to that. But then there, there, for some reason, they had been moving in a positive direction. And then the state security apparatus ramped up, and it's pretty much as oppressive as it ever has been in Cuba. So while there was some indication about five years ago uh, when Raul kind of took over that they would be moving in a more freeing, liberating direction, that's not really the case right now. David, uh, again, around the world, uh, you know, and again, Cuba, of course, might be the best example of, of communism not working. I'm not sure how they expect to, to keep the current policies in place and not have some sort of upheaval at some point. Well, yeah, but I, I honestly don't think Raul is the person to change anything. First of all, he's the guy who took out his own pistol and shot capitalist uh, hoarders, as he called them, in the back of the head back uh, in the beginning of the revolution. This guy's a murderer. He murdered business people for being business people. Uh, and he also has been the, in this game before where he opens up just a little bit and then when, when capitalism begins to flourish because Cubans, as H.A. can tell you, are natural entrepreneurs, when capitalism begins to really take off, he closes down again, uh, puts handcuffs on all the entrepreneurs. So it's this cat and mouse game that they've played for decades now, just allowing enough capitalism to save their, their butts when they need to, and then closing down when capitalism begins to take off. And of course, A.J., the irony on that particular note is that the first commercial flight from the U.S. lands the day that Fidel Castro passes away, I've got to believe the young, young people there in that, in that island nation, to, to David's point, have a certain DNA, and they want more, yeah. and they can do more, and maybe they'll be able at some point to demand more. Right, but we need this kind of negotiation and these talks. We all want to see that, including the people on the island. But even the people on the island are praying and saying, America, don't give up uh, the cow without getting something in return. <laughs> what happened with Obama's orders is we gave up quite a bit, resuming commercial flights, reopening the embassy, reappointing an ambassador, lifting certain regulations on Cuban imports. But we got pretty much nothing in return. All we had them do was I think they liberated about 53 political prisoners. That's it. That's ridiculous. As Mr. Trump is saying, President-elect Trump, we need to have a two-way street here. What are they going to do? What kind of freedoms? What steps in the right direction will they do for their people? And then we can come to the table as well and perhaps continue what Obama had started, but only if they give up something in return as well. And can something I just, significant. Can I just add two things to what AJ said? Uh, one, uh, we took them off of the terrorist list. You know, the State Department has a right. list of terror countries. I mean, that's like taking Yasser Arafat off the terrorist list. They've been supporting <laughs> terrorists all over the globe for as long as they've, the revolution has been in power. Second thing, it's going to be very interesting to see if President Obama goes to Fidel's funeral. If he doesn't go, who does he send to go in, in uh, his stead? Uh, I mean, again, honoring somebody like Fidel Castro is sort of like honoring Pol Pot or Adolf Hitler. I, it, would, it would really be astounding to me if the president goes. If he goes, uh, boy, what a last step that would be in his presidency. Yeah, it would. I, I mean, listen, his statement was, uh, was, was just horrendous, uh, uh, A.J., yeah. you know, it, it offended everyone. Uh, but he wasn't the only one, right? We had the Canadian prime minister. You had a lot of well-known people in America, including the mainstream media, who almost lionized put Fidel Castro on a pedestal. You know, I expect that from Trudeau. I do not expect it from President Obama. He is the leader of the beacon of freedom in the world, the leader of the United States. And for him to issue such a benign statement about the largest oppressor, Fidel Castro, in the 20th century in the entire Western Hemisphere, um, you know, aside from obviously Hitler and, and a few other leaders, is just... It chills me to the bone, not as a Cuban American, but as an American. It was humiliating um, and, and a true disgrace to have the president issue such a benign statement about such an oppressive, horrific figure. Yeah. Well, there's a new sheriff in town. Thank you both very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.